Hey friends, grace and peace. Welcome back to another midweek prayer service with First Presbyterian Church. Uh, before we get into our prayer service today, I want to mention just a, a couple of things for you. Uh, first, starting tomorrow and going into Friday, we're going to host our Wilson Elementary canned food drive. So that means you can stop by the church uh, between 9 and 11, both Thursday and Friday of this week, to drop off any canned goods or non-perishable items. And members of our mission committee will be there to safely collect those items and get them to Wilson Elementary School. Uh, the other thing I want to say is, uh, just like we've been doing the past couple weeks, we're going to worship together at 11 o'clock this Sunday on both our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Uh, so I hope you'll join us for worship then. Uh, the last thing is I've got a couple of questions about Second Wind. Uh, Second Wind is the coffee house on Campus Corner that we support and helped founded a number of years ago uh, to be a safe space for university students in the campus community. Uh, that coffee house is currently closed, uh, but the board of directors and our student directors are hard at work uh, making plans so that we can have a successful fall program at Second Wind. So if you're uh, interested in helping support that ministry of First Presbyterian Church, uh, we encourage you to visit their website, secondwindcoffeehouse.org, and uh, donate and volunteer your time with them. As we uh, jump into this service today, uh, let us pray, starting with a prayer made famous by Thomas Merton. My God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire, and I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may not know not anything about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. Believing in a lie 
Scripture for this service comes from Psalm 116. Listen for a word from God. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of shale laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his peoples. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call in the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. For a long time, I've always wanted to be one of these people that gets up early in the morning, who goes to their back porch with a hot cup of coffee, and who starts their day in prayer. For a variety of reasons, that has yet to happen in my life. I've always wanted to be these people because these people seem so dedicated to a life of prayer, a devotion to serving God and praising God and being with God starting from the first light of the morning. The psalmist today says that they love the Lord because God has heard their voice and their prayers. Now, I'd like to think that we love God for more than just the times when God hears our prayers and listens to us, but I understand what the psalmist is trying to say here. Uh, Prayer is an essential part of our life. Not only is it the way that we connect with God, but it should also be a time when God connects with us and speaks with us. One of my favorite scripture readings is the story of Elijah. God comes to Elijah when Elijah is distressed and says, Elijah, I'm going to meet you on top of the mountain. So Elijah climbs the mountain after days of hiking and climbing. He finally gets to the top and he sets up camp and he rests and waits for God. While he's in his tent, a huge windstorm comes and it rattles the tent and it shakes him awake. And so he hops out of the tent ready to meet God. But God isn't there. So he gets back in the tent. And then an earthquake happens. And again, it it rattles the tent. It wakes him up. And so he hops up and jumps out of the tent ready to meet God in this earthquake. And God isn't in the earthquake either. Same thing happens with a firestorm. The firestorm comes and there's fire everywhere. And so he hops out. But again, God doesn't show up. And then, just when he thinks God has flaked out on him, a quiet whisper blows through the tent. And in the whisper is is the voice of God. And God meets him there in the mountain in the quiet moment of the whisper. In the days that we're living in currently, sometimes it feels like uh, there are earthquakes and there are firestorms and there are windstorms. There's chaos all around us rattling our tent. And so we're hoping to hear from God in all of that. But maybe what we need to do is, is to settle ourselves down, to grab a spot on the porch, maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening, maybe when you just have a second, and to 
be still and to listen for God, to pray to God, to give thanks to God for all the things that God has done in our life, for our health, for our safety, for grace, and for love. And so uh, my prayer would be that through this, that you might be still, that you might offer your praise and your prayers to God in whatever form that takes. Join me in prayer. God of surprise, you meet us on the road, you meet us at home, you meet us where we are, and oftentimes we do not recognize you. Yet when goodness is there, when bread breaks, when grace is shown, when love is shared, you reveal yourself. Surprise us once again. Many are feeling anxious, lost, and confused, and Lord, we need you more than ever. So we pray that you would surprise us. Remind us of your infinite love for us during these troubling times. We pray for our dear friends who suffer from illness and loss. Lord, help us to be a presence of comfort for them. For those who are lost and alone, alienated from family and friends, we ask that you empower us to reach out in compassion, offering help that will lift them into new life with you. We pray for all who are in situations of danger, whether that be war and strife or sickness and loss. We pray that your peace will be with them and that danger will be conquered by your good news. We pray for our community, especially those who feel the real struggle of scarcity. May their needs be met, O God, and may those with abundance share with others just as they would share with you. We pray for our nation. We ask that you give our leaders compassion and wisdom. We know that decisions that affect millions of people are tough to make, so we ask for your wisdom, that all your people will be seen as holy and made in your image. Now, oh God, we, we pray for ourselves. We ask for an extra measure of faith, an extra measure of grace, an extra measure of patience, so that as doubts arise and anxiety heightens, we may meet all of them with confidence and emerge as strong witnesses to your love. In these days, O oh God, enable us to be better in prayer. May we lift our concerns to you, confident that you hear us giving thanks for all the good things that you have blessed us with. And Lord, we give you thanks most of all for Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, it's good to be with you. It's good to spend a little bit of time in worship in the middle of the week. And so I pray that as we continue through these days that you might take some time to, to offer your prayers to God, to let God know of your worries and your struggles, but also the good things and words of thanksgiving. And I hope that you will remember through all of this that no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, that you are loved. You are loved by Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who rests upon each and every one of us, tonight, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.